All right. So, hey, everyone. Welcome to God Friday Discussions. So this is a little disclaimer. As we embark on this journey together, it's important to acknowledge the diversity of thoughts, beliefs, and experiences that each of us brings to the table. Our discussions are rooted in the spirit of exploration, learning, and mutual respect. The views expressed are those of the individual participants and are presented for the purpose of open dialogue and personal reflection. We recognize that we, re we recognize and honor the freedom of personal belief. This platform does not advocate for any singular viewpoint as the absolute authority on spiritual matters. Our discussions are intended as a safe space for sharing and growth. We encourage you to approach each session with an open heart and mind, but also to respect your personal boundaries. If at any point you find the content not to your liking or comfort, you are free to disengage as you see fit. While we seek to provide enriching content, participation is entirely voluntary. We assume no responsibility for any personal decisions or interpretations made in response to our discussions. Our aim is to foster a community where curiosity, faith, and understanding can flourish. Thank you for joining us on this journey. So yeah, let's dive into it. Matt, what are we... Uh, What's what are we going to be discussing on this God Friday? So you know we we got into a little well we always get into deep discussions but today um, it was interesting how you gave your your concept about how you uh, you disagreed on what it, there's good and evil and I think I think you're you're kind of saying the same thing but yeah the basically the discussion on what is good and what is evil. So you didn't believe in anything good or there's good or evil. You think everything is, I forgot how you explained it, but you could yeah, explain like, that in a minute. So the, the way I was thinking is there is no good and bad. Like we humans, we create good and bad. We, we, we kind of decide what's good and bad, but um, in reality, there's just God, there's just oneness. And um, there is no like, Good and bad isn't a real thing, uh, well, necessarily. It's real to the point where we humans will make it real, but to God, everything is just God. Well, so that's where I kind of give you a different perspective on it, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's not that you don't believe that there's good or evil, because uh, I think everybody would agree that, uh, you know, uh, a pedophile would be an evil entity. You know what I mean? That's nothing. There's nothing good in that, you know, or the massacring of, you know, uh, an entire population that, that can't be good. Right. So the perspective I gave you was maybe not necessarily good and evil, but that which promotes a relationship with God and that which inhibits. Yeah. So, so and there's certain things way... you could do that will promote your relationship with God. And there's certain right. things that you can do that will inhibit. So I, I guess yeah. that's kind of my outlook. What you're, yeah. what you're saying per se. Yeah. And uh, a way I kind of visualize that is like, you're either moving closer to God or away from God. And well, how do you move way... away from God though? So I would equate that with love and fear. So love is moving closer to God and fear is moving away from God. Okay. Um, I guess, how does love make you move closer to God? Because God is love, you know? <laughs> so the more of that you get into, the more you feel that, the closer you're moving to godness <laughs> okay but what is love then well that's a good question that's like we have so like especially in uh with english what? western society well, love can mean a lot no, of no, things we don't we don't we don't need the the webster's definition of it so like you yeah. said love is something that basically promotes a relationship with god because it is god so what is the act of love? What is 
what is within the spectrum or you would say love that promotes that relationship what is within that spectrum within that spectrum i'd say yeah. i'd say it's kind of just a feeling so it's just like if you feel good or feel that sense of just joy um you move towards towards that feeling and it's like you're and a key part of the whole god thing is seeking god so mm -hmm. we may not feel love all the time but there's always love within us that you can find you have to you have to look for it though yeah so um yeah what happens when you don't feel that love man and yeah maybe it's because of some unexpected un unfortunate circumstance that was out of your control and you don't feel that love um is it not there? I don't know. I don't. I don't know what I'm saying. I guess like if yeah. You're... No, no. I I hear you. Like because sometimes like shit's just hitting the fan, right? And like mm -hmm. you know, you're you feel super agitated, angry. You're maybe getting pissed at everyone, and you're not really feeling that love. But that's that's where the seeking comes in, because when you're seeking that love, and you're seeking it inside of you rather than through outside of you that is the key to moving towards god i would say maybe mm. i'm still trying to understand what you what you define as love though like yeah you said love promotes your relationship with god because love is god but what is love feeling it's a feeling so like it's that feeling of joy the feeling of so Peace. you don't think there's like a feeling of of suffering within love sometimes as well? You don't think when you love, you like, there's also suffering is covered under that definition that you're saying? So like with love, you don't feel like if you're suffering, like there's no love? Say sometimes Say that again. there is no joy. Say that again? Yeah. Say like, they like, within that spectrum of joy does like does not suffering uh um you know fill in despair sometimes fall under that category too of love you don't think you have like you could love somebody and still suffer yeah like that you, that's a really I'm good way a good to enough. put that's an interesting way to put it like suffering to me feels like maybe a lack of love like you're not you don't feel that love so okay so you're saying everything suffering. under love is good i would say so yeah and i would say it's like not like an absolute type thing it's more of like an infinite It's like, it's like a destination or I don't know about destination. I don't know. I've kind of gotten lost now. I got you. No, let's, 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 I'm going to keep recircling back, recircling back to this. Yeah. Um, so if everything within love is good, is that you, you, you kind of feel that that's the case, mm -hmm. what is good? Yeah, it's 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 very much like personal. So, so what's good so to one you. person may not be good for another person. I got you. So one person might believe that this is going to get extreme here. I don't know if we're going too far down down the rabbit hole, but I feel like we always do. No, that's okay. what we're doing. That's yeah. That's exactly what we're doing. So like one person might look at raping a woman as good. Yeah. But to the woman that's being raped, is it good? No. So where does this good come from? You would I you would not agree. I know that I know that's not the case with you. I know 100 percent that you would not agree that raping a woman is good. Right. So one person might believe the genocide of an entire population is good. Yeah. And he yeah. can have a whole so he can have a whole population following him that believes that that's good. So where does the standard of good come from 
I think I think the key difference there is the seeking of good from the external versus the internal. Because when you talk about raping a woman, say there's a man who really wants to have sex with a woman and he sees raping her as something that would feel good for him. But he's actually looking at the, he's looking externally to try and grab that good from the external world. But the good is already there. The good's inside. And you have to actually, you're seeking it from inside first. You so how do you know when you're seeking it inside. from inside versus, how do you know when you're seeking it from internal versus external? What is your tell off? Like, what is your, uh, how do you know for certain that what you're seeking is of God, of love, like you would define it, that it, it's not, like it's not a it's not this facade it's not this you're not seeking from the external versus the internal how how do you get confirmation from that cuz I, I i would i would i would make the argument that and i think a lot of people probably make this argument that hitler yeah. truly believed in what he was doing was good he was doing it for the best of the better of his people uh he believed in what, what he was ra doing raping raping a woman or murdering no what what hitler was doing what hitler was oh doing. yeah 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 what Hitler was doing, he believed it was good. He believed he was doing it for the better of his people. Probably the same with Stalin, the same with, uh, you know, these other tyrants that have been massacred millions of people. But like, uh, they they probably truly believed in what they were doing as good, and they believed they were seeking it from internal. So if this standard comes from an individual's internal, I, I know you know that, you know, Stalin wasn't a great human being you know that hitler wasn't a great human being but i believe that they were seeking like you were said from their internal so what would make what made their internal not from love and what you're saying from love so i would say hitler like let's talk about hitler so i would say hitler was not looking to the internal like that's my assumption i'm assuming that he was probably trying to find this goodness by controlling the external world. But it's actually the control of the internal world, which is the key. You get, um, you're going to be able to get closer to God when you have more control over your internal world internal world and but if you, you try and yeah how do you how do you know for certain and i know yeah. i know you're you're a moral human being man you 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 could see when people are suffering and you have like empathy and compassion for people you know i've, I've known yeah. you maybe what, i think that's everyone over? though i think we're designed that way like human beings that's just how we are made we're made to be we're actually made to love each other but then the reason we don't is because we grow up in these societies and environments that don't promote that uh, necessarily. It, it's more about competition and like resource well, allocation. Mean, yeah. Do, do you think like, you know, the recent scandals we've seen recently, like uh, Epstein, uh, Puff, yeah. Puff Daddy, Diddy, like these people, do you think that they were... You you obviously believe that they thought that they were, uh, I'm this evil human being. No, they actually believed like they weren't doing wrong, and they were helping people by you know putting them on, uh, whatever you know. Um, not to get too deep down that rabbit hole, but uh, you're you're saying that people have it built into them, but where where does that good come from? Like where does that design come from? Like if it's I would assume you say it comes from God, right? So then how do we know what is good and what isn't, what is evil? Like, how do we know? What is our standard? Where does that standard come from? What, 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 what I was just thinking is like, I think faith is a key part of that. So it's going internal and having faith 
in that internal part of you. Because when you, I think these people like Jeffrey Epstein, I didn't know, I didn't know about the whole P Diddy thing, but uh, it was in your in your backyard, basically, bro. They just raided his house in your backyard, kind of. Oh, what crazy! <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. Um, but yeah, like I think those guys they lose touch with their internal, and they wind up trying to find God or good or God, whatever in the external. I think it's just a lack of lack of being in touch with yourself that causes people to do stuff like that. They 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 get too attached to the world around them and they think the world around them is the reality. But the reality is that everything that's external is coming into you through your senses and you're perceiving everything. So everything is truly internal. There's nothing that's actually like i was just talking with my friend today and we were talking about how when you look at things there's actually a delay because it takes time for the photons to get to your eye and then the brain to process that into an image everything we see is delayed by like you know a few nanoseconds or something and it's actually upside down too isn't it what do you mean like we, had, well, this is oh yeah, getting, that's right, that's right. Our brain actually, flips, we actually see things upside down, around. but we, we, yeah, yeah. So I think, I think our reality is like what how we see it. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? If it makes sense to you, man. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So like, what, like we're actually seeing things upside down. Our brain is turning it yeah. around and making it make sense to us. So yeah. everything we see, feel, taste, touch, it's all coming in through our body. And we're experiencing the world. Actually, it's an internal experience. We're, but we get our we can see things and touch things. So we we think it's kind of an illusion. It's a trick. Mm -hmm. And so when people say the devil, that's kind of how I think of it now. The devil, the devil's kind of the external world. And it's not to say that the external world is bad, but it's when you take the external world as the ultimate truth, that's where you kind of lose lose touch with that true reality. Because the oh, so so yeah. so that, that that that's one of the things I brought up to you, man. Like biblically, that's actually in alignment. Your your thought process yeah. is that yeah. You're either of the kingdom or you're of the world, right? Right. There, there's no in between. And where's so the kingdom? Either, so the, the the kingdom is, you know, the being i guess just in a simple way of putting it being in good standing with uh with with god jesus right? well jesus jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within and i'm kind of going with that <laughs> um yeah well we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll get into some stuff you know but yeah it's a good and evil thing right now right because yeah yeah yeah, yeah. About the good, good and evil that's probably another conversation we can have we're going to be many of these right but uh yeah. Good and evil, man. So we kind of just kept going in circles, but yeah, you're just saying good is something that's built into us. But what is good? And you're saying good is love, okay? But what is love? And you're saying love is good. Like you can't, you can't. It's a feeling. Just define something it's with feeling. something else. Love so is it's a, a feeling. feeling, okay? Yeah. So you think love is is just a feeling? Like it's a, it's like hey. I feel this way. It's like what a positive. Really... It's a positive feeling. Mm. What about you? Ever like uh, is, is there somebody like you really care about? I don't know, a brother, a sibling, a friend. Uh, all right, would you suffer at that person's expense? Yes, I mean, so not, um, it, it. Well, it depends, right? It depends on the situation and what what's being asked of me. Like, it's right, so it's up to me on. to determine whether that's going to be gotcha. something that I want to do or not. Got gotcha. you. So here, I'm going to say it as simply as like me being a father, right? Yeah. Um, if I saw my kids, uh, one second, bro. Let me go. It's about to get loud in here. Oh shit! Okay. 
You got it, mommy? Hold on. Sorry. People out of my office before people interrupt me. We're getting into Yeah, yeah. Good foresight right. there. <laughs> so sorry, Rush. Don't mind the uh everything going on down here. All right. No, so, bro. So if you had a wife and your wife had terminal cancer, right? And yeah. That terminal cancer led to you having all types of stress, all types of uh, maybe not remorse, maybe not like uh, regret or like feeling like she's a burden, but there is a burden you're holding. Yeah. Um, you don't think that's suffering? That excellent Luke question. So, okay, I have an example. So, Today, I had a good friend tell me that she has, she likely, probably most definitely has breast cancer. Mm. And that, you know, it's scary. I felt scared. I felt sad. Um, but I also felt this sense of trust in God and that it's not my job to fix her cancer. I'm, I don't have control over that that's god's thing all i i can pray for her i can keep her in my thoughts wish the best mm -hmm. but god is god is like literally everything like god is keeping my heart beating right now god's keeping her heart beating god is keeping us alive constantly so god yeah. doesn't God's not trying to to hurt us. God, we we actually we have the choice. We have choices. And so through whatever decisions we make, we actually kind of take ourselves in the direction of cancer or like right now I have a herniated disc and uh, I'm recovering from that. I'm starting to do some back exercises and stuff. But it was me, like, I'm the one who decided to smoke all the time, sit down all the time, not move around, not connect with others. That was all on me and my relationship with God. Because I was treating, I was treating drugs like it was God, basically. Mm -hmm. The drugs was my God. And that's a false God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, reading, uh, going through my own personal journey, um, reading the scripture, seek his kingdom first and his righteousness and all things will come. I, I, um, decided that God is, number one so i'm always like i've made a commitment and i'm not perfect right i get distracted i do this i do that beautiful girls like i want them but you know it's like um it's seek his kingdom first so that's that's going within that's getting that's mm -hmm. meeting your that's meeting god that's like god wants you to be with him Mm -hmm. And then, but, okay, I, yeah. I, I, I agree. With every not not what everything you're saying at the moment, man. But I, yeah, I, yeah, I understand yeah. what it is you're saying. Um, yeah. But let's get back to the good and evil thing, man. It's yeah, yeah. We're 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 we're, we're kind of getting off the topic, and I'm not trying to uh, stop the conversation. No, actually, wait. Yeah, let's 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 let's. Yeah, yeah back to the good out. versus evil, man. So, all right. So, in my experience, like, it's easy. It's easy to love when the situ when when the relationship is conducive right it's easy really easy to love it's really easy to love god right now and talk about how god great god is when when your life is great but when you're diagnosed with you know or your wife or your kids are diagnosed with 
whatever cancer and you got to spend all your time like working and then you spend your time going to you know uh doctor's visits whatever uh chemo treatments things of that nature you know and you got to actually I, I would say a, a parent that watched their child get diagnosed with cancer and watched them die definitely is a form of love and suffering. And there's a hundred percent suffering and love and Christ is an example of that. Like, like he literally died. So me and you can have this conversation and, uh, Oh man, is that a thing, Raj? Yeah. We're, <laughs> let's uh let's let's uh exit this i have the recording and then we'll start it up again fuck this all right, upgrade all right. shit <laughs> all right <laughs> in business got it got it all right man so i wanted to try to bring it back to a simple simple thing right so yeah. um biblically what does the bible define as love right Biblically so, defined. so another way, another way I was thinking is you can define it by light and dark. So if you think of a plant, plant is growing towards the light. And it's not like the plant is trying to move into the shade. The plant's always reaching for the light. And I think you could think of good and evil in the same way. Um, oh, as so light this. and darkness, yeah, got you. So, here, um, yeah, uh, there's a verse, uh, the Bible, man, it says, uh, yeah. love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor or dishonor others, it is not self seeking, love does not easily anger, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but reju rejoices in truth. And truth is a whole nother one we could probably hold the conversation on, but not today. Uh, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Uh, where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Okay, so biblically, that's what love says. What love is, and I want to give you an mm. example of what what love, what what Jesus said, what love. So, I, I think we were talking about this briefly the other day when we were on the phone for a few hours. But uh, so keep in mind this story is after the resurrection, right? Um, so Jesus is they just finished eating. Jesus is talking to uh, Peter, and he tells me, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes. He says, you know that I love you. So here's here's the, you got to give the background on this. Like, so the original text in this is like in the Greek, because Greek was actually like the English language back then, right? It was the, the, the world standard. So it was like everybody spoke Greek. So it was written in Greek. So when he asked him the first time, he uses it in the Greek word uh, agape, which is a, a divine. It's a divine love, like unconditional. You understand oh, what agape? agape? Agape. Yeah, A J A P E. Agape. Right? Agape? A, A G A. -E. Oh, okay. Yeah. Agape. And uh, so he says, you know, Peter, do you, do you love me? But in the agape sense. And Peter replies, uh, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He says, but Peter replies, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. In the philia sense, which is uh, P H I L I A, which is the brotherly love. He says, Yes, you know, I love you like a brother. So Jesus said to him, All right, feed my lambs. So he said again, Simon or Peter, do you love me? And he answered again, Yes, you know that I love you. And Jesus said it in that agape version again, Do you love me? He says, You know, I love you. And then, uh, you know, Peter replied back, like, You know, I love you in the brotherly fashion, the, the philia version. So Jesus asked him, or Jesus tells him, you know, take care of my sheep. He asked him the third time. And this time he doesn't use the agape version. He comes down to his level. And he says, G or, or Peter, do you love me? In the brotherly love. And Peter was hurt. So it's kind of like a, a, a recollection of how he did it three times during in that that uh, 
Ask him three times, does he love him? Just like he told Peter three times, you'll deny me before the cock crows. So Peter wouldn't suffer at the uh, uh, the same expense that Jesus suffered for us, right? And then Peter was hurt. He says, you know, you know I love you. Of course I love you. And Jesus says to him, very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you were dressed, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. Um, but when you were old, when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. So Jesus was telling him, uh, you're going to die for me. Um, so that you could give the testimony and spread the truth to everybody else. So uh, basically, love isn't always good, man. Love is 100% suffering. Not all the time. Explain, but... explain, explain how that story equates to love not being good. I don't understand. Well, do you think Jesus wanted to go and, or not Jesus, do you think Peter wanted to go and die and be uh, a martyr? You think he wanted to suffer the same death that Jesus did? You think he wanted that? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, but of course not, man. He 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 was yeah. dreading it. He was dreading it. But because he'd seen the miracles that Jesus performed, he'd seen the, uh, he, he, he was firsthand experience with him. He was willing to do it. And he was willing to suffer at the expense of uh, the word living on, basically. So, you know, Peter was actually the the beginning of the church. Like the church, the what we would call the Christian church actually began with Peter. But, uh, but we're getting lost now. How does that, ex I, I don't understand how that story equates to love not being good or something. Because he had to act 100% suffer. So when you're saying... I asked you earlier, is like suffering a part of love? And you said, no, not really. Um, that a hundred percent is. Uh, yeah. Cause I he, think when you're, when you're in, uh, in your, if you're in suffering mode, you're not feeling that love, but when you have that faith, then you're not actually suffering because you're, you're in pure faith. Um, actually, no, I, 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 I would say that's easy to say, but let somebody put a gun to your head. Oh, yeah. Say, no, no, no. Hey. Easier said than done, for sure. Like yep. uh, it. And that's part of the test of our 3D reality is like, how much faith do you have? Right. Like, it's like, um, well, when when uh, when Peter was watching Jesus yeah. get crucified, he 100 percent denied him. I don't know that, man. Oh, because he, he knew that he would suffer the same punishment. He knew it. That's fear. Well, that's... That's not love. That's fear. Okay, maybe we're getting somewhere where you're saying the same thing, but I think you're giving it an explanation, uh, like you're just trying to give your own explanation of it. Yeah, no, that's just but, how I, I see that. If he, yeah. he sees Jesus suffering, and he's like, fuck that. I don't want to suffer like that. He's scared. <laughs> he's scared to suffer. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the yeah, second yeah. time around, the, se yeah. the second time around, when Jesus yeah. told him, basically, you, you're going to you're, you're gonna be martyred for me. And all the disciples are actually martyred for Jesus. Uh, and that's a historical fact. That's not a, uh, like a fictitious, a made up story. You know, there's historical documents that substantiate that. Yeah, but still, but, we're, we're talking about love versus fear. Mm -hmm. Evil, good versus evil well we're talking that, about good versus evil and i asked you about good and you said good is love and i asked you is love all good and you said yes so i said do you think there's suffering involved in love and you would say you said i would think no and i would tell you i disagree 100 percent that there is 100 percent suffering involved with love that is the ultimate love is when you could suffer at the expense of someone else because you love them so much that you'd rather suffer than see that person suffer. See, yeah, I think that's that's too much. That's too much in the because like, all right. So, for instance, my uh, at work, uh, I have a coworker and mm -hmm. he loves his son. So much. It's beautiful. And um, he's willing to go to work every day working this kind of honestly not not the best job but he actually he appreciates the job like i i'm not a huge fan of the job but he is he's he the same place though by the way sorry 
Are you still at the same place? No, I actually quit my job uh, a couple okay. weeks ago. Yeah. Well, we'll talk something different though. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. But uh, he, so when I see him work, he's not suffering when he works, even though like it's not it's not the best work. His back hurts. My back hurts. We both have back problems. Um, there's a lot of like shit we got to figure out and just stuff that like, you know, sometimes annoying stuff happens and you have to work through that. But his love for his son makes that stuff not suffering. It's like, it's not, it, it, when he focuses on the fact that he's doing it for his son, it doesn't, he feels good about it. He doesn't feel bad about it. He feels really good about it. Um, says you. Yeah. If, if we, if, if from we what got I down see. to, the, yeah, if we got down to the core of it, there, there's yeah. times where you don't want to get up. There's times that you don't, uh, you know, you, you want to be selfish, but you, you know, that you being selfish, somebody will suffer under the expense of your gratitude or or your not your gratitude, your pleasure, because you want to uh, be fulfilled for that day. Sacrifice is love. Suffering is love. Like I I think when we say all these things that are good, it's a hundred. Well, don't want to put that message out there. When we say that love is all good, that's a hundred percent inaccurate. True love is suffering, it's sacrifice, it's uh, putting yourself after others. Like, that is 100% like what love is. Like, this, yeah, this I, idea. that doesn't ring true to me. That doesn't ring true to me. That mm. that rings like uh, you have to suffer to get good things, and like that's like that's the opposite of what's true. Like, what's true is that you. You see, all you have to do is seek God and it's, it's, it's just like a plant growing towards the light. Plants don't grow towards the shade. That's not how they're made. They grow towards the light. No, no. Uh, some plants actually do grow in the shade. Um, That's some true. Plants don't, some, some plants don't actually need light to grow. Um, some plants grow but underwater. Again, this some, isn't, this isn't like an all- this isn't a fact thing. This is just the idea of light being love and darkness being fear. So you know I'm, I'm not like being strict about like in general, plants grow towards the light. Like if you look around, they're growing towards the light. I mean, sure, there's plants out there that like thrive in darkness, but um, yeah, I mean that that exists. But the 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 idea is that we're we're all trying so to grow. So, towards, but, so yeah, if but, you want to like if you want to get into the scientific aspects of it, maybe the plants that grow in the darkness they're they're actually growing towards a certain environment, like a moist moist environment. That's their that's their comfort or God or I think whatever. That's everything, Raj. That's everything. So it's everything. It's not just the plants that grow in the water. Uh, uh, if, if something grows in the sun, it's, it's it's that's the environment that it's in. If, if if it needs to grow underwater, if it like that's the environment that it's in. Like you know what I mean? It's not. Uh, yeah, but but still, ninety nine. Like all of life is coming from the sun. Like the sun is the thing that put it. It gives us light. Plants grow. And nutrients are made, and then those plants that grow in the darkness, they're 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 living off the light of the sun, but it's not direct. Well, um, not everything's living off the sun. We've established that. So say that everything. No, no, no it's the sun. That it, it's not direct. So the sun creates another plant, which creates a chemical that 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 enables that darkness plant to grow. So it's not a direct light thing, but it is everything that's life on planet Earth is basically from the sun. Yeah, but we're kind of we, we we've kind of gotten to a topic that we we kind of agree that the Earth isn't reality, like the physical world isn't reality. There's a a spiritual world that 
actually dictates that reality. And so if, if we're if we're using like our worldly wisdom to when it benefits us and then when it doesn't benefit us, we're we're saying like, but that's of the world. So you can't, you know, you you can't so that that person that uh that we said earlier that didn't seek within, they were actually seeking from the external world. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're telling me uh, to validate so, your so argument. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is never going to be the ultimate truth because God is infinite. We can't comprehend infinity. Our brains aren't mm-hmm. designed like that. So we have to think in these terms of light and darkness to kind of get an idea. Yeah. But yeah, um, I got you. Bob. And even what I'm saying, like it won't make sense to everyone, but maybe like um yeah maybe it makes sense to some people doesn't make sense to other people right we all have our ways of taking in this this external world and interpreting it well so i i would think that like my my objective would be like finding uh finding helping people with this kind of thing right like helping people uh how can we help people if we can't clearly bridge these gaps you know and i think that's what me and you are trying to do uh because i think i we we had a long discussion on wednesday and it was like everything you were saying it was like uh, maybe 85 i'm gonna go 85 percent of everything you were saying was like it was just sound biblically like fundamentally and you're not even like in the bible like that so you i mean i mentioned you, you you talked about how god uh, God kind of forgives, you know, and he doesn't like hold the uh, hold a grudge, uh, a grudge, basically, yeah, something of that nature. But like the only uh, the only religion that teaches that is is Christianity. Like uh, in Islam, God is most gracious, most merciful. That's the what they say all the time. Most merciful. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, let's get back to the good and evil thing, though, man. The good yeah, and evil let's thing. get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're back to the good and evil, man, because we're talking about, I ask you, what is good? You said good is love, and I ask, what is love? And you say, yeah. Love is kind of like the light. It's kind of like a feeling. It's kind of like moving towards the light. Somebody's trying to get in my door. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so but what what is what is where is this standard of good come from then you know i just i don't know we can't say that we, we make it define. up we make it up individually it's it's no we no of course we don't make yeah. it up individually you, you most people um well okay okay so let's let's go from there if we make it up individually then yeah what's the truth of it if it's all individual perspective, man, if it's all like a subjective or objective. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There is no there is no actual good or evil. We're making it up. There is no truth in that. The truth is God. Okay, so that's one Which thing I will within. agree with you on that. I will agree with what you said the truth is, okay? 100%. Yeah. That is the truth. Yeah, yeah. So when you die, what happens then? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a doorway into the next thing. I don't know. It's you haven't an thought that journey. far ahead yet. You haven't yeah, thought that yeah. far ahead I, I, yet. I'll wait. I'll wait for that. I'm not sure. Well, um, I'm okay with not knowing. <laughs> I, 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 I think everybody should know, and I'm not going to go there with you right now. But I think everybody should know, like, and understand. But uh, to make the world a better place, like I, I believe what it is you want to do. I, I mean, I talked to you. You got that little hippie spirit in you, man. You know what I mean? I do. You be, My you wanna, God, I do. <laughs> you want to you want to be you know you want to help the world you want to heal the world like you when you see people suffer like you have compassion you have empathy like that's built in you man but i would I think, think you would say us, that, that i don't is, think that's so special about me i think we're all like that yeah yeah so even, I, I would even say if some yeah oh I, I would say that you would you would define that as good i would define that as good most people would define that as good mm-hmm. but where does this standard of good come from and you say it just comes from the person. So then if everything is just a 
uh, personal perspective, then what's the purpose of doing good? Why not just be selfish and do whatever it is you want? And if it harms others, who cares? Because there's, there's no consequences, you know? Well, just who think cares? about it. If you if you hit, if you uh, do something like that, that's kind of like what learning is all about. Like we've all done things that are maybe selfish, that hurt someone else. And how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel good? Um, in certain circumstances, it made me feel nothing, which is probably even worse, like apathy. Well, that right? means you're not but... in touch with your feelings. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta feel yeah. your feelings. Feeling your yeah. feelings is very important. It's actually like schools trained us, like life has trained us to, especially as men, to push down your feelings, uh, hide your feelings. You don't, as men, to be tough. You you can't feel, but I'm I think that is the opposite of what men need to do. We it's actually better when we feel our feelings and yeah. No, I would agree with you on that. I'd agree with you that we've we kind of created a I mean over over probably decades too. It's, 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 but it's gotten a lot. It's gotten over. It's when the pendulum swung too far the other way where men are becoming women and that's not what we were designed for. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would agree with you, man. Like, I, you know, coming up, but don't cry. Uh, that's weak if you cry. Right. And I think in, I right. think in certain circumstances that is the case, but there are 100% circumstances where it's okay as a man to, uh, to cry and to tell yeah, no, a little I boy think... that. Sorry. Tell a little boy that is probably not, not healthy. Like, oh, don't cry. You know, like it, it, there's certain circumstances it is okay, but I, I don't want to see you cry when, uh, you know, your, your ice cream fell from your cone. Man, come on, man, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? Or yeah. like, uh, yeah, you didn't get you. your way. I don't, I don't want to hear it. Like, quit crying. You know, like a, a worthy reason of crying. Hey, man, your grandmother died. You know, okay, man, if you got to cry, cry, let it out. You know, it's yeah. okay. But like. I feel like, um, say your ice cream falls, right? And you cry. I think instead of saying, don't cry, there's better ways to soothe that sort of thing. Because it's the crying is just like, it's a feeling like, oh man, like nothing works out for me. I'm not like, I, I honestly, I can't really, I can't uh, put myself in the frame of crying because my ice cream fell. But like, uh <laughs> I, I can see you crying like over the notebook though, man. I can definitely see you crying over that. Yeah. Dude, yeah, they they died like <laughs> together. Like, wow. <laughs> uh no, I didn't cry for the notebook. I cried for Schindler's list though, dude. That that's a fucking that movie's well, heavy. Well, that's that that's an example of what we're talking about is when yeah. people when people eliminate uh, a standard of good and evil. And we rely on our own intuition, our own feeling. That's the world. That's what the world leads to. Like, I, I fear that that's exactly where the states are leading to. Like, offense isn't real. Like, you can't deem offense as real because then it's all just relative to the offendee. Like, I might think... uh you saying that uh, the White Sox suck? Yeah, if you see mm -hmm. that there, it's offensive, you know. It's offensive, but you're you're just making a statement, you know what I mean? But it's not truth, and that's a bad example. But like, uh, offense isn't it isn't real, man. So like, you can't your offense can't be like law. It can't be a standard of something, like. Huh. Like there has to be a clear guideline. Like this is the boundary we don't go past. We don't go past this boundary because once you go on this boundary, there's no limit to your argument after this. Like anything and everything under the sun is acceptable. And that's the mess we see the states that we, we, we lead to is because we eliminated this standard. So the misconception in my, my infinite uh, 40 years of, uh, growing up and being a complete failure in life. Uh, so the United States was actually this misconception that United States, it wasn't meant to be uh, like a, 
a Christian country, but it was in fact founded by Judea Christians, right? Christianity. Like if you look at our everything, yeah, we consider uh, U.S. a Christian country essentially. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, so everything within our within our spectrum, like you look at our when you go to court, you're judged by how many jurors? Uh, nine, nine, fifteen. <laughs> 12. 12 how many okay. disciples were there 12 well uh-huh all right so our government is made up of three different you know you got the judicial legislative and executive branch right three different branches Honestly, yeah like the the make the making of the u.s is kind of interesting because like i feel like the our forefathers they actually were doing the seeking and putting God first and stuff when they made the country. And that's actually what made this country like pretty awesome. The most powerful country in the world is because we had a standard of God and we were the greatest country in the world for what, 200 plus years. Right. And I, I would think both of us would agree that we're, we're falling off that category. Um, and uh, yeah, so the direct, the, I think, you know, the, I think we can hold it a bit longer though. I think we still got room to grow. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think we got to dial it back a little bit at the same time too, man. Like mm. what, what you're saying, we got to put God first. So yeah, uh, there's that's this key. Narrative. That's going to be the key thing. Well, there's this narrative now in the states, right? And this is kind of relating to the good and evil thing. There's this narrative now in the states that these Christians are um, they're using this term now, Christian uh, nationalist. Oh, and they're okay. saying. Yeah, they're saying what it is, is they're not real Christians, is they're Christian nationalists, is because they believe... What's a Christian a nationalist? Well, it, it, it's, it's a made-up, uh, one of these trigger words that these groups use. What's it supposed to, to refer so to? What it is, what, what, what they're referring to is these, they're saying that this group of people don't believe their authority comes from Earth. They believe their authority comes from God, right? So... I want to. What do you mean, authority? Like who? Authority over? So they, they 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 feel like uh, their authority, like their their uh, they don't answer to anybody but God. Or oh hell yeah, yeah, that should be how it is. I think. Well, that that's actually the Declaration of Independence, man. That our yeah. unalienable rights that we uh, what is the terminology? I was trying to pull it. One up. nation under. Oh no no, I don't know. That's the pledge oh, of allegiance. That's the pledge of allegiance, bro. <laughs> Um, are unalienable rights that come from the creator, meaning that we have God-given rights that cannot be taken away from us. Mm -hmm. You know, the right and the, the right to uh, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of religion, and pursuit of happiness. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Those are those are un that's why I love America. Not, it's all about well, freedom. God's free. Well, it, it's not becoming that now. It's like it's it's free as long as you agree with individuals. And me and you disagree on a lot of things, right? But like we still we don't we don't I don't I don't hate you. I like I like you, man. You know what I mean? Like I like you too, man. And honestly, <laughs> like I like uh I think that is what God's glory is, man. It's like people who disagree with each other being able to connect and debate each other i think that is part of what america is all about it's like that's why we have these freedoms is so we are free to and that's why freedom of speech is number one because we should be able to freely talk about these things and that's where that's where the value is that's how that's what makes america great well here so here, here's here's the actual verbiage you know we hold these yeah. truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? So you have the freedom of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So yeah. pursuit. Like, yeah, we, we don't we don't need to be force feeding our uh what we believe down people's throats right like yeah we don't meet we, we don't do that like me and you we, we actually just enjoy talking about these types of conversation man yeah and if yeah. anybody's even watching this in the future you know we'll see but yeah uh, but yeah definitely like that's the the declaration of independence says that like your 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 rights come from the creator not from the government 
So yeah. the moment we put and the, the Constitution we... even says if the government imposes its forces on the population or is like for some reason like doing some bullshit, it oh, re- it's our responsibility. Listen. Yeah. They're getting in my way, Raj. Y'all good? I, like, I, like, yeah, I can't I can't have any peace, bro. <laughs> is it your kiddos coming in? No, nah, no, nah, we're good. No, nah, go ahead. Say okay. that one more time. Say that one more time. Um, yeah, the Constitution actually instructs us, hey, if the government's doing some fucked up shit, it's your responsibility to fix it. Well, that's the, the Second people. Amendment. That's the Second Amendment. Oh, so, that's the guns, right. No, but, no, no, I mean, no. The, you second know, Amendment, have... the, the Second oh. Amendment is not about guns. That's the biggest misconception, man. All right, bro. Actually... I, think, I think we need to close this, this session now. God, but bless it, we can. Let's continue next week with more God discussions and let's end with a prayer. Yeah. You want to do a split prayer? Maybe I do a little prayer. You do a little prayer. All right, man. Raj, really all right. All right. Here we go. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. All right. God, Dear God. For the... oh, oh, who's go going for it, first? Go for it. <laughs> who's going first? Bro? All right. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Dear all God, right. thank you for this beautiful discussion with matthew i really appreciate being able to speak my mind freely and say what's in my heart and thank you for our health and allowing us to grow and get closer to you okay all right all right so uh god the father the Holy One, the Creator, the 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 authority, ultimate authority over all of creation. Thank you for this moment and allowing me to uh, have this conversation with Raj. Um, it's always a great conversation with him, uh, allowing us to speak on things that really matter versus things that really have no significance in this world uh, when we're on our deathbeds, most particularly. Uh, hopefully. Uh, I'm working on this, Raj. I'm working. Give me a second. Hopefully, you know, we 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 get to a a common ground here where we're seeing eye to eye and in the actual truth. And I just want to thank you again for this moment with Raj and uh God bless him, bless his family, bless his uh finances, bless his house, bless his bless everything about him. Let every door be open. Uh, hold no information back from him. Whatever truth it is he seeks, give him truth. You said it yourself, like you will not hide anything. Uh, for all that is written will manifest itself and expose it to Raj. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sweet. That was awesome, man. Yeah, that was a yeah, good prayer. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for blessing my house and finances <laughs> well 100 percent, man we there's those all those things actually matter man and all those things no god that god knows that all those things are are a necessity for all of us so yes uh, sir definitely man yeah i want to uh continue this man you know but uh this was good man this is really good i like we, we we kind of didn't really finish the discussion on good and evil but i still think you i feel like it was meaningful and uh I kind of got interrupted in the last second, but it is what it is. I have no peace in my house, no, no, uh, <laughs> no place to <laughs> just leave me alone. No place, man, ever. You're in the bathroom, somebody you. knocks on the door, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, definitely, this was good, man. Uh, really That's looking family, forward. Right? Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to like having these conversations more and more. And maybe we can get them more structured, obviously, and find a better platform that we're not being interrupted every, uh, you know, every 50 minutes, it seems. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll have to do it on Google Meet or something like that. Is there a way you can still record it doing all that? Uh, yeah, I can I can make it happen. I just like didn't have OBS set up properly. Like I was kind of last minute putting this together. So can, can um, you record on Discord? Yeah, yeah, you should. I, I can, like, it just screen records, so it'll record whatever, whatever. Okay, on the I mean, screen. I mean, we 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 can go on P or whatever. You know what I mean? And 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You that's never know. So, somebody might just see us in there having a conversation. And pop and in. Jump in, bro. Yeah, that's cool. Bro. That's a great you know? idea. All right, and so the, next the, week the, we'll do it on Discord. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And let, let's keep it. Uh, remember how I told you, man, just meet people exactly where we're at, where they're at, man. So people yeah. come in, they're really raw and they're whatever. It is what it yeah. is, man. If anybody watching this is offended, then, you know, then maybe it's not for you and that's okay. But, yeah. You know, that's our objective, man, to meet people where they are and to find, uh, you know, truth. And we're going to find it, Raj. Yeah, man. We're, we're seekers. We're, we, we be seeking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely, bro. Yeah, man. Let's keep this. I'm, I'm going to keep a little thing going in the, the WhatsApp group and, uh, yeah. Keep your little, keep your mind wondering. You know? I have some scripture, some Bible verses I wanted to share too. So I'll, I'll throw that in there. Throw it in there, man. Yeah. And if you got a question about something, throw it in there, man. Like, throw it in there. I, I, I may not have the answer, but I know somebody who does. Trust me. Yes, sir. And they'll give you very good explanation of it, man. And that's it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Matt. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll be in, you know, we'll keep talking. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We got to see, see what you're farming and all that. So we'll be in that crypto game, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's another thing, man. Definitely. For sure, bro. Awesome, man. All right. Have a good rest of your day, Matt. All right. Good, you too, good bro. Talk. Talk, talk to you later, bro. Peace.